The shovel stopped mid-dig. A metallic thunk announcing that it had struck something other than dirt. Ramona jabbed into the soil again, curious about what was buried in her newly bought backyard. Her brow crinkled in annoyance at how poorly her plan to plant a wisteria tree was going, but the prospect of buried treasure quickly ignited a childlike excitement in her. She had bought the countryside house at a highly discounted price, one that her real estate agent Dave frequently joked was almost too good to be true. This house is simply to die for, and the price guarantees that you won't be crushed by debt. He had promised to be close by if she needed anything, and told her that if she ever wanted someone to show her around the area, she could give him a call. Dave had been flirting unashamedly with her since he had shown her around the property the week before, so Ramona had been glad to sign the paperwork and escape from his cramped, dingy office. While she was there, he hadn't mentioned the previous owners burying a time capsule or anything of the sort, so this was probably a forgotten child's toy, or a long-lost metal lunchbox. A few minutes' worth of rapid digging passed, and more and more metal was revealed. Three hours later, Ramona stood filthy and panting in front of a once-buried door that led further down into the depths of her backyard. She had expected a palm-sized object to be unearthed, not something that belonged on the side of a house. The dirt-streaked iron door was chained closed, with bolts and padlocks festooning it. As she stared at it, she could swear that she heard something moving behind it, and an almost inaudible scraping sound reached her ears. Ramona shook her head, easily convincing herself that she was just exhausted and that it must be the dirt sliding around on the other side of the door from her disturbing the soil. The amount of rust on the chain showed that it had been closed for a long time, and when she tugged at one of the padlocks, it stayed firmly in place. She would ask Dave about it in the morning. At that moment, her growling stomach loudly demanded attention, so she figured that the mystery of the door could hold off until tomorrow. A phone call and a hot shower later found Ramona on the couch, a box of delivery pizza in hand. She clicked around Netflix, finally ending up in the horror section. What should we watch, Frankie boy? Her black lab, Frank, wagged his tail at her, clearly only interested in getting pizza. She tossed him one, laughing as her greedy mutt expertly caught the slice by the crust. He wolfed it down, barking happily in thanks. Ramona flicked past Let Me In, King Kong, Nightmare on Elm Street, and Friday the 13th, before settling on The Mummy. She hadn't seen the newest one yet and the way the strange door in her backyard reminded her of a tomb had her in the mood for something scary. Ramona and Frank finished the movie, and as she headed to bed, she found herself feeling a little nervous about her first night alone in the Pennsylvania countryside. She had grown up in Philadelphia, so being able to see trees outside of her window was a novelty. The house was also full of odd creeks, which Dave had assured her was just the house settling. The wind was knocking a few of the old-fashioned shutters against the side of the house, so she made sure to latch them in place before getting in bed. There was no use in scaring herself silly over a window. Around 4 a.m., a deep growl woke her and she took a moment to process what was happening. Frank was out of the bed, something her lazy mutt hated doing at night, 
and he was staring at the far window. Ramona could tell that it was the one overlooking the backyard, and the sight of her normally placid dog's raised hackles was a bit disturbing. Frank, come! When he ignored her, Ramona got out of the bed, her slipperless feet wincing away from the cold, hardwood floor. She grit her teeth and made her way to the dog, gently tugging at his collar to get his attention. In the moonlight, she saw his eyes shift over to her, but he wouldn't budge. He was clearly guarding the bed and wasn't about to leave his post. Damn it, Frankie, get in the bed! No response. Not even a tail wag. Ramona let go of his collar, making her way gingerly over to the window closest to her bed. She was sure that all he was freaking out about was something new to him, like a deer or maybe a coyote. Just to be safe, she pressed her hand to the glass and peered out around the yard her eyes straining to make anything out in the darkness of the cloudy country night. She checked the first two windows, each with the same result. There was nothing moving out there, not even so much as a leaf blowing across the grass outside. She let out a frustrated sigh, her annoyance level spiking with each window that proved there wasn't anything her dog should be upset over. By then, her feet were freezing, and getting in bed was more tempting than checking the last of the four windows. The moment she turned to go back to bed was when the harsh, ringing sound of heavy chains heaping together caused her to jump and shriek. Ramona ran to the final window, her eyes growing wide at the sight of the now-opened doorway. That was the moment Frank decided to run out of the room howling, his paws skidding on the wooden floor as he pelted down the stairs and out the doggy door. Ramona ran after him, barely stopping long enough to grab a flashlight out of the kitchen drawer. She threw open her front door, darting into the yard after her best friend. Her shrill pleas for Frank to come back went unheeded, and just as she rounded the corner of the house closest to the buried door, she saw something move near it, then disappear inside. She skidded to a halt at the maw of the door, her hand shaking so badly that the flashlight beam was dancing. Ramona could hear Frank moving further and further away underground, and in a moment the sound was smothered by the musty air wafting out of the doorway. All she wanted to do was call the police, but she didn't want to get in trouble for wasting their time. Plus, with how far out in the country she lived, Frank could have gotten hurt by the time they would make it there. She would just have to rescue him herself. As she stood there debating, her knees trembling in terror, she heard her dog's quiet whimper. Frank! Her cry was swallowed by the darkness, and all that followed was silence. That was the first time she noticed the deep furrows on the inner side of the door. There were large, thick gouges in the iron, something which no animal could have done. They were long and unbroken, crossing from the upper right corner to the bottom left side as though something angrily swiped at the door. Ramona was shaken out of her observance by another whimper, this one sounding even more shrill and panicked. That was it. She knew she couldn't just stand there while Frank was in trouble, so she repressed her fear of the unknown and passed through the doorway. The first step was hardly illuminated by the flashlight, and staring ahead was like looking down into a bottomless well, for just a moment, she thought she saw the glint of eyes in the darkness. But they were gone before she could see more. 
the railless steps wound downwards in a spiral, and it took all of Ramona's concentration not to fall. The stairs were spotted with slick, dark patches of liquid, and once she realized it was blood, she broke down sobbing. Something had gotten Frank, but she still had to know what happened. As she reached the bottom of the staircase, she found a pile of eviscerated rats, their mutilated corpses strewn about the narrow hallway. Her relief that it wasn't Frank's blood was quickly replaced with horror as the dead bodies trailed off into the darkness, the decapitated heads of the rodents spaced like macabre paving stones. Ramona resisted the urge to vomit at both the grisly sight and the noxious stench, and as she quickly made her way down the rock-walled corridor, she was careful not to step on any of the poor creatures. The corridor, barely lit in the weak beam of her flashlight, was just damp, solid rock wall. The floor was some sort of semi-rotted wood, and it looked like it could have once been an old root cellar. At the end of this hallway lay a second metal door, but this one had been smashed through. It was ripped off of its hinges, and had several more gouges along its surface. Frank? She hadn't heard any noise except for her own footsteps, but fear was nearly winning the battle for Ramona's fight-or-flight response. The entire situation was surreal, and she just wanted to get Frank and pretend that the whole creepy experience had never happened. As she stepped gingerly around the last rat carcass, something caught her eye in the next room, her flashlight barely causing it to glint. For a hopeful heartbeat, she thought it might have been Frank's collar, but as she passed through the second doorway, Ramona saw that the beam was reflecting off of a massive, golden statue. The ceiling tall cobra was melted around a hieroglyph-covered pillar, layers of sand blanketing the base of the serpent. For a moment, Ramona wondered if she was even in Pennsylvania any longer, or if this was some sort of outlandish nightmare. The statue had two arms with long, dagger-like claws protruding from each scaled limb, and it had an almost human-like intelligence emblazoned on its face. While fascinating, it wasn't her dog. She began scanning the room for any signs of Frank, but there was nothing more than sand and another closed metal door on the far side of the room. She was sure that there hadn't been any other hallways branching off, and she didn't remember seeing any other doors until this one. After the stairs, it had been a straight shot to the snake room, and there hadn't been anywhere for a 60-pound lab to hide. Ramona was becoming frantic, her chest constricting as her panic built. The thought that monsters existed was almost too much to process. There had to be a rational explanation for everything that had happened, and she was probably becoming terrified over nothing. Even as Ramona tried to shake the cloying dark thoughts from her head, they crept right back in. Something had taken the chains off of the outer door. Something had very recently decapitated a bunch of rats. Something was strong enough to leave marks in a reinforced iron door. And something must have her dog. She had to find him. Frank, come here, boy, now! Where's my good boy? Frank! Silence was all that answered her call. 
tears began rolling down her cheeks, and Ramona held back a sob. The sound of slow applause made her scream, her flashlight beam illuminating Dave's face when she whirled around. Her real estate agent lounged casually against the doorway, a smirk plastered on his face. Well, congratulations, Miss Gabourey. You've made it further than any of the others. <laughs> My demon must really like you if you didn't immediately end up like the rats, since he has a tendency to play with his food before eating it. <laughs> he? Oh, yes, let me introduce you to my pet. His name is Naja, and he's about a thousand years old. Hence his horrendously outdated taste and decor. Why do you have a demon? How do you have a demon? Th this is crazy. Ramona stopped in mid-sentence as the sand at the base of the effigy began to undulate, the ripples spreading outwards until the statue's tail was slithering across the ground. The beast began unwinding itself from the pillar, and where Ramona expected a metallic grating noise, there was only the soft shifting of the sand. She turned her attention to Dave, tensing her body to sprint past him. Just as she was about to dart forward, the creature's tail lashed out, knocking her off of her feet. Before Ramona could catch her breath, she was slammed down. Eight massive golden claws caged her torso to the ground, and it was her turn to whimper. As they constricted slightly, she screamed again, a long, wailing sound that echoed around the chamber. Tears were streaming freely now, making trails in the sand and dust that had settled across her cheeks. Oh, don't look so sad, Ramona. Your life finally has some actual meaning now, and your pathetic little existence will help fuel a new era in world history. When he's eaten enough, this bad boy will be able to break free of here. And once that happens, <laughs> he'll be unstoppable. And I, as his master, will, of course, reap the benefits. The demonic entity began pinching his claws together, effectively squeezing the air from Ramona's lungs. She tried to scream again, but it came out as more of a gurgled <laughs> cough. Between his natural armor and deadly appendages, Naja will bring back the glory days of the old gods. Besides, why keep killing off house buyers for mere pennies when I could make millions killing off the world? Frank was crouched under the porch in the backyard, his tail tucked between his legs. He had tried to warn his human that the suit man was outside in the dark, but she had ignored him and told him to get in the bed. He had led her downstairs to show her, but for some reason she had run right past him and gone down into the bad-smelling stairs that were in the grass. His whimpers hadn't seemed to reach her, and each time she had called to him, he had wanted to go to her, but his fear was too great. Couldn't she hear the bad thing moving in the dark? Why hadn't his friend come back yet? His soft cries continued long into the night, as his heart filled with sadness. He just wanted his human back.